this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Wherever you find us, whether it's a video or podcast on your favorite platform, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. You can also find us on major social media platforms. If you go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com, you can find links to the videos or MP3 files, which you can download and enjoy without commercial interruptions. If you're into classic horror, ghost, and adventure stories, I narrate Nightshade Diary, and you can find links at NightshadeDiary.com. If scary stories are your bag, and listening to encounters with cryptids, ghosts, dogmen, and other weird creatures sends a shiver up your spine, then go to SupernaturalStoryTime.com for links to our weekly podcasts. Noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird can be found at eerie.news or visit the Stranger Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Please subscribe to my newsletter on Substack. Just go to mppelliser.com for a link. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? As you can tell, the for those of you who are watching the video version of this, last week's episode I was in total darkness because you know victim of the puppy and I, I you know I had to that 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 camera which was very bad on lighting now I got a new one which I'm experimenting with at night that's you know as you can tell I'm like but I have my lights turned off with the exception of that back there and I'm ready but anyway I'll figure it out it's just that when I connected this camera it was daytime and my lighting now is nighttime one of those deals uh, you know what? I mean, we become creatures of habit. That other camera, I'd had it for years. And you know when you have everything just perfect and then this happens? <laughs> so sorry. What can I say? Anyway, guys, um, don't forget, I'm going to remind you again to sign up for the Substack for, uh, on my newsletter with Substack. Like I said, that's where I put out um, any new projects, articles, uh, some of the new um uh, well, older videos and newer audio podcasts. And then I said, and of course, um, any announcements? Like, I know this is going to be a little bit staggered, but we're going to have a live stream next Tuesday for Mardi Gras. And we're going to have all that interesting stuff around Mardi Gras. God knows there's a lot of interesting stuff. So anyway, guys, and of course, for those of you who can't make the live stream, I am going to have the, the version of the show, which is going to be recorded and accessible, both the video and the audio version. So let's get on to the good part. And the good part is the guest. This gentleman, this is his first time hearing stories of the supernatural. And his name is Mike Cleland and published a book in 2015 titled The Messengers. And in it, he explores the mysterious connection between owl synchronicities and UFO abductions. Uh, it was his first hand experiences with these elusive events that have been the foundations for his research. Owl seemed to play a shadowy role in the UFO contact experience. They also show up in relation to highly charged events like synchronicities, ancient archetypes, dreams, shamanic initiation, magic, psychedelic hallucination, spiritual transformation, and death. He is considered an expert in the skills of ultralight backpacking and is the author and illustrator of a series of instructional books on advanced outdoor techniques. After living 25 years in the Rockies, he now lives in the Andernachs. Help me welcome him. How are you doing today, Mike? Wonderful. Thank you for having me. On the contrary, it's my pleasure. That is such an interesting thing about the owls. And you know what? Where I live at now, it's very rural. And we have big owls out here, big ones. And you hear them hooting all the time. And you can hear them. I mean, this is not little owls. And, um, you know, there's always been some type of, how can I say, uh, history. Either when you see them as wise, you know, the wise owl or spooky, but I'd never heard or seen the relation between that and the UFO, UFO field or anything like that. How, how was, I imagine, was this something that you observed while you were doing all your, 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 what you're traveling or your backpacking, your hiking? Well, I certainly saw owls every now and again when I was living in um, rural Idaho and, um, and I lived in upstate New York and I saw them there. I'm presently living in, um, the Seattle area. And I have them right out my window almost every night. I heard them last night loud, right out the window. Uh -huh. um, but so the, the, within the UFO literature, it's 
like it's pretty well understood. Like, so you, you, there's books on UFO contact and books by UFO right. researchers and books by people telling their first person experiences with the contact experience. And I'll, I'll tell you in almost every book, there's a couple of sentences. Okay. Almost every book has a couple sentences like, Oh, I had this release really odd experience with an owl or, you know, the UFO researcher will say, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's commonly understood that, you know, people will see owls around the time of UFO contact. And it was always just a little sentence or two, never much. Right. Like a, by the way, kind just of a thing. little aside. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I, um, so, I mean, I mean, to tell the, how it happened to me, do you want, I can just tell the story? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So I was, um, Living in a small town, this is going back in 2006, which is four, seven, that's 17 years ago now. Okay. And I was living in this little town right near Grand Teton National Park. Jackson Hole, Wyoming is on one side, and there's a little town in Idaho on the other side. So I was in this little cute town in Idaho, and I um, had been working for this outdoor school all summer long. I'd been up in Alaska, I'd been doing lots of outdoor work. And um, and this, there was a branch of the school that I worked for. I don't really want to use their name. But you could Google me and find out in about one mouse click who that what that school is. But I'll just I okay. feel better not saying it. So sure, uh, not anything wrong with the school, but I just I realize my story is pretty far out, and I just so I don't I'm not representing the school. I haven't right. I know. I, I believe me. I understand where you're going with that. So, yeah. so I so. I was at the school and there was a young woman working there at the branch doing the in-town stuff, you know, with the gear and the food and the luggage and all the stuff with the students. And I got to talking with her and her name is Kristen. And I, and I said, Oh, you must've been camping a lot. You've been here all summer. This was September at this point. And, and I said, Oh, you've been here all summer. You must've camped so much And the beautiful, the Tetons and Yellowstone national park is right there. It's a real camping culture and kind of a camping you know, it was real common for people to go camping in the summer in the mm -hmm. town. And she said, no, I haven't camped once. And I said, that's terrible. That's horrible. I'll take you camping. And so it was kind of a first date. Like, I didn't know this person. I said, I'll take you okay. camping. She said, okay. So we packed very light. We were going to go for one night. And I knew the weather and the weather was very easy to predict. And there was going to be no rain. It was going to be a beautiful, calm night. And so we didn't take a tent. We're just going to sleep out under the stars. Okay. And I, and, and we walked into the mountains with a light pack. You can walk in quick. And we walked in and we got to this beautiful spot as the sun was setting. Just amazing, glorious spot. I, I knew this terrain really well and I'd been there many times. And so um, I made dinner on a little camp stove on a big flat rock in a field of wildflowers. Just spectacular. The sun is setting and we're having a conversation. And I remember this so clearly. I, she was talking about something. And I thought to myself, this is, this, I'm impressed with this woman. This is, this is, I mean, she was a stranger, essentially. And mm -hmm. I was like, I did not expect her to be this smart or to be this insightful or to, to have this depth. And at that moment, as I was having that thought, as she was telling me something and I was having that thought, an owl flew right over us. Okay. And then another owl. And then a third owl. And we sat there and ate our dinner out of our little bowls. And it was like uh -huh. these owl, three owls flew over us for like the next two hours. Okay. And we actually, so it's, you don't want to camp right where you eat, right? So there's food smells and the mice are an issue and so are bears, but we are much more concerned about little mice and stuff like that. So I said, let's just walk for a little bit and we'll find a nice spot to camp. So we don't have to camp right where we ate. Okay. We're not camping. We're just find a flat spot to lie down. Right. So we walked for a little while as the sun was setting and the owls followed us. And when we laid down to sleep, we put our sleeping beds on the ground or pads on the ground. And we just laid out under the stars, which I've done many, many times. And this, this is the Northern Rockies. So the stars okay. are spectacular. And, and we laid down, we were looking right up at the nighttime sky and, and, the, and the stars would be blotted out for just a half a second. And these owls were swooping down right over our faces. They're very wow. quiet. They don't make any noise. And it was so eerie. It was so magical. And the next morning we got up and we were like, wow, that was so cool. Let's, you know, and so we walked a different way back. We had a wonderful hike back to the car and, and we got, you know, so we walked in in the afternoon and we left in the morning and we got back to the car by around, you know, well before lunchtime. And, um, 
And I said, let's, if I, this was wonderful. Let's do this again. If I want to go, let's, if you want to go camping, I'll give you a call or I'll, I'll give you a call. Let's try to do this again. So, so four days later, I called her up and said, let's do it. Let's go camping again. She said, sure. Great. So we went camping again and this time it was a little colder. Okay. And, and cold enough that it was a little chilly and we had a tent this time. So I said, okay, we're going to, before we go into the tent, let's walk up to that hilltop and watch the sun go down. Right. So you walk uphill and you have a, right. you have a, you get warm. We okay. can watch the sun go down. We can walk back and get in the tent. And then we'll be warm. You don't want to climb into the tent kind of chilly. You want to, so, so she said, great. So we walk up to this hilltop. We get to this, this gentle hill. It was five minute walk from, we could see it, the hilltop right from there. So this big open terrain in the high mountain environment. And, and when we get to the top of the hill, an owl flies over us. Wow. What are the chances owl. of that? And the chances are zero. So uh, the, so three owls flew around us. I'm this was a totally different part of the mountains. Four days later. And these these owls landed. Our, one owl landed at our feet. And I've talked with, with Kristen recently. And and I, she's heard me tell this story. Because I tell this, this is the, this is the best way to introduce what's happened what's happened in my life. And, and I said, is this right? Am I like, I was, I'm so worried. I'm exaggerating. And she's right. like, Oh no, no, no. This is exactly what happened. And I remember the look on her face and these owls were at our feet and the look on her face was just, yeah. And, and, and I did not say it then at the time, but I'm saying it now. Okay when those owls were flying around us, I had a thought in my head that was clear as clear can be. I said, this has something to do with the UFOs. I'm not sure if it was my thought or was a thought that came into my mind, but I was looking at these real owls. These were cute owls. They were like, you know, 10 inches mm -hmm. tall and cute. And oh, they were just magical. And, and I was like, this has something to do with the UFOs. Now, after that, to have it happen once was pretty cool. To have it happen yeah. twice was mystical and almost mm -hmm. frightening. Like both of us were like a little freaked out. Wigged out, huh? Yeah. So we did, this was 2006 is kind of the early days of the internet. So we did all kinds of searches and things for animal spirit guides and and what the totem meaning of, of an owl was and stuff like that. Right, so, right. So I just got lost in it. But at the same time afterwards in the months and weeks and, and since then, like I realized that I had had like I had stories in my youth that I could tell. I could sit around a dinner table and tell people like, oh, I had this experience when I was 12 years old and I have a missing time event when I was okay. 12. I have a, a close-up UFO sighting when I was 12. And when I was 30, so in 2006, I would have been 44. I'm 60 now. Okay. But I, in, I had an experience when I was 30 of waking up in the middle of the night and there was a bright light shining through the window and I sat up in bed and there was five gray aliens walking towards the house. And I dismissed it. I denied it. I wasn't going to go there. I was like, no way. Couldn't have happened. No way. So, so what did you think? It, did you, did you at that moment think the next day a dream or I one of those? A dream. I just thought it was a dream. And that okay. was winter time. And I was in Maine, living in Maine okay. at the time. And I just, I could have easily walked out and looked if there were footprints in the snow. I never bothered. Okay. And I, that event, so that event of seeing the, the beings out the window, I right. looked out the window, they were, there was a bright, bright light behind them. And this, it would have been perfect if it was like a big flying saucer. It wasn't. It looked mm -hmm. like it was about the size of a washing machine. It was just this bright light in the trees, small, okay. backlighting them, lit up my room. And I had a voice in my head that said, oh yes, they're here. Now is the time to put your head on the pillow and shut down. And I just... Just, I should have panicked. It was a horribly frightening right. image. I should have freaked out. I should have locked the doors. I should have grabbed a baseball bat. I should have got knives in both hands. Right. But I didn't. I just whoosh, went right to sleep and out. Now, Did anybody in your family or anybody living in the household? Sleep? I was alone in the house at the time. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So now, so those were the, those were, those are two of those were in my youth. 12 year old mm -hmm. was seeing a, orange flash in the sky and having missing time. And then another time when I was also 12, which would have been 1974, I saw a, um, like a coffee can shaped craft, like okay. hovering outside a window of a friend's house at night. 
and we both saw it and we both drew it and I still have the drawing and it's on my blog and it's in my book and such. So now, so the event happened in 2006 with Kristen. Okay. And I made a diary entry about that, seeing the, the owls. And I, I had a lot of synchronicities in my life, a lot of like really powerful coincidences that were emerging in my life. And I was kind of, sh- I kind of had a di- a set of, a set of those written out as diary entries. And so I, mm-hmm. I figured out, well, like this was 2009 and early in the era where people had blogs. I said, I can put my synchronicities out as a blog. Okay. So I put that story, I think it was on the first day of the second day I had the blog. I put out that story with Kristen, just as I told it, except I didn't, I didn't share the part about the voice in my head that said it was connected to the UFOs. So I put it online and then I reread it and I, and I said, just what I said to you now, I said, like, I had, like she, Kristen was saying something really powerful at the moment the first owl showed up. So I called her up. She was no longer living in the town I was living in. She's back in Michigan where she grew up. So I called her up and got her on the phone. I said, like, what were we talking about the very first night when I saw the very first set of owls? Or we together saw the very first set of owls. And she said, oh, I remember exactly what I was talking about. She said, I was giving my most heartfelt definition of what God means to me. Wow. So like that took, for me, that took an already powerful event and just gave it an extra charge, like an extra spiritual charge. Now I'm not at all like churchy, you know, like I don't- Right, right, but you're saying but it I wasn't reckon... just me, it was, she was also participant exactly. in this because of what she was saying. And it, right. and it, and, and so since then, in my blog, I started kind of, I had more owl experiences and kind of cataloged these things and kind of put a few notes out. And then it, it wasn't too long before I put a little thing on the sidebar of my blog and said, I want to hear your owl stories. Okay. And, and so what happened is in, it didn't take very long. So if you do, you could do it right now. You can Google UFO owls. Okay. And I'm the first thing that comes up. And I'm about the next 25 things that come up after that. Like, it'll no doubt, it'll come right up. UFO owls, Mike Cleland, it's going to come right up. So, so what has happened is I said, I want to hear your owl stories. I've been collecting, archiving, trying to make sense of these stories. So I have been collecting stories for the last 15 years. And I am flooded with these powerful stories. Now, not all of them involve UFOs and not all right. of them involve owls. I've got stories of hawks and, uh, and eagles and hummingbirds and other, other mm-hmm. what I would say, highly charged spiritual totems, let's say. Right. But the, the majority of them are owls and UFOs. And then there's some outlying things. But I have been flooded with these stories and I have been working very hard to make sure they just don't sit in a file somewhere. I want those stories sure, out there. I want sure. them to be alive and I want people to, to tap into them. So they're, so, um, so yeah, I'm not going to run out of stories and that's no, that's, no. Well, you know what, when you had that experience, Mike, did you ever think back then later on and recall encounters with owls that now you looked at it with a different, Yeah, you know, sometimes things happen and in the moment, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like you said, the synchronicity, you see it, but you really don't capture the intent or what it was. But then when you look back, you're like, wait a minute. You know, I had this moment and this moment. And, you know, maybe I just missed the message. I, you know, I missed the memo on it. So I did have some, I did have some experiences with owls beforehand. And it's tough because I, like, I got to be really careful, right? Because I walk down the street with my friends. You walk down the main street of any town. Let me tell you, like, there, there's a you're gonna look in a window and there's gonna be an owl calendar, right? Or some little kid's gonna walk oh, by yeah. with an owl t shirt. Oh, yeah. Like it's a, uh-huh. and people are like, look, look, it's magic, it's happening. I'm like, don't you like, I gotta be really careful because I know there's just, there's normal owls around. So, so I, what I can say is, yes, I did have a handful of owl sightings, but what happened after that event with Kristen, once I started looking into my own UFO experiences, okay, I was hit with so many owl experiences like like mind-blowing ones and those are in the book just it felt like my life just came unraveled so i was having synchronicities after that event at a at such a heightened level that it scared me that i basically i was i've i've said this many times and 
and it's true. Uh, I, I between about two thousand and six and two thousand thirteen, mm-hmm. I I spent ninety five percent of my daily waking hours wondering if I had gone insane. Right. So this that the world was presenting me with so many synchronicities. Okay, and you're it, like, man, am I seeing something that's not there? I imagine you're asking oh, yourself it was, this. Huh? And there were owls. Oh my god, I had owl sightings. So many, so many owl sightings. I actually was having so many owl sightings. This is so so. I went into the woods alone okay. and I said, I can't take this anymore. Like, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to listen to a little, I'm, if you, if there's a little owl way out on the fence post off in the distance, that doesn't count. I'm not going to pay attention to that. Driving right. down the road and there's an owl out in the field. Uh, uh-uh, not going to pay attention to that. If you want my attention, cross my path. I want you to, I want you to make, like, I'm not going to, I don't want any doubt. Right. I said this forthright. I said it a day later, I'm riding my bike through town. And I see an owl on a, on a, I'm on my bicycle. It's a little hill, right. just a little hill. I'm just coasting just gently downtown. And there's an owl on a, on a telephone line. And oh it my God. comes off and it flies right across my face. If I put my hand out, I probably could have touched it. It went up onto a, into a tree on the other side. So it's just like, whoosh. I said, I'm not going to pay attention unless you cross my path the next day. An owl crossed my path. And, and I, and it has, so it's calmed down enough for me. And the, the way I say it is like, I don't need, I don't need to, you don't need to prove anything to me anymore. Like, I feel like I've got my proof. Right. In other words, this was not something that you could have engineered subconsciously. Oh, well, maybe who knows how that your subconscious works, right? So you put out an intention to the world and the world reflects it back. So, right. But I'm saying as far as the owl thing, let's face it, you know, your subconscious can do a lot of things as far as motivating you in certain things that you think consciously yeah. is not, you know, it's not in the wheelhouse, but it is. But getting an owl to fly across your path, uh, no, that's incredible. Yeah. And I have so, so some of the stories are very subtle. Okay. And some takes, take a long time. Some, I love the subtle ones. There's like a little poet. There's almost like, a, like, the, like the experience of Kristen saying that she was talking about God the night we saw the first okay. owls. Like that's such a subtle point. And I love that kind of storytelling when just that little bit of, I almost want to say dream logic. You know what I mean? Kind of drifts into a story. Do you think the owls are messengers or or portenders? What do you think their role is? Okay. So one of the things, I started getting these letters. Okay. And people would tell me, they would write in the letter and they say, oh, the owl landed on the fence post. And then okay. I, and then something, and often very powerful mystical experiences would be connected with this. And in the letters, they would, they would call it the owl. And then, the next line, they would say, the messenger told me, uh, okay. like, my father misses me or something like that. And and that was happening organically. Like, I wasn't I wasn't asking for that. Right. Like, that was, so I was getting that. And it was a friend of mine was helping me with this. And I was going to call the book, the, the Messengers of the Night is what I was going to call. It. And she said, just call it the right. messengers. And so I did. And, and now, um, I could tell there's a hundred stories I could tell. So some of them are very subtle and some of them take a long time to tell. Okay. And, uh, and there's some that are that I can tell quickly. Whatever. So you, you're pick, you, you tell me, I mean, and I know what you're saying. Uh, it also depends the context. I don't know if you're talking about your stories or stories that were told to you. Mm-hmm. And how can I say, I think it's the personality of the person. Some people pick up on subtleties a lot easier and there's others that unless it falls on their head, like a big grand piano, mm-hmm. they don't get it. And sometimes that's exactly what they get. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to deliver something to you that you cannot ignore. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then, um, so, so here, this is, this is, this is the problem. And I tell this, I don't tell this one often. It's in my book, but I don't tell it very often. So the woman, Kristen, the very first night after seeing the very first set of owls, we walk back to the car, right? When we were walking back to the car on the trail, was my old girlfriend. I hadn't talked to her much. She was a very, very small town. We'd see each other in town. There was always a level of awkwardness. Okay. And it was someone I cared about. And she wanted to have kids. And she was, and so I was at a place in my life where I was not ready for that. So she and I agreed to separate so she could have kids. She's afterwards she got married and she has. So she's walking down the trail with her two little kids. Right. And one of them is a little boy and he's tiny, and the other is a little girl, and she's about eight or nine. And so Kristen 
just or starts walking with a little girl. So she, Kristen holds the girl's hand and they're right in front of us walking. And I'm with my friend. I'm going to call her Carol. Okay. And I pick up her little boy and I'm carrying him. Okay. So, mm -hmm. and, and Carol and I have the conversation we have been waiting to have. We have the conversation where basically we, I told her my life is going well. I'm happy. We, it's so nice to see you. I'm glad you're happy. And she could say the same thing to me. My life is going well. i I have my family. I'm happy. So that was the conversation that we we needed to have, and we had it on that trail. We mm -hmm. get to the car. We say goodbye to Carol. We say goodbye to their kids. Kristen gets in the car next to me, and she looks at me and says, that little girl, I had a conversation with that little girl. It was the most important conversation of my life. And I'm like, what? Really? Uh, what? What? And uh -huh. she explained that the little girl, there was something about the little girl that reminded Kristen of her when she was that age. Oh, okay. so it was just like so subtle. And so, so in the, in that would have been 2006, maybe around 2010 or so I'm at my house in this little town. This is, this is a, and, and this, there's no UFOs in the story, Okay, but it's everything about the sort of mystical aspect of this. I'm in my house and I get this pull. I got like, I got to go outside. I got to go mm -hmm. to town. And, and I, as I do, I see people riding on a bike path. There's where I lived. I lived exactly three miles from town. Okay. And there was a bicycle path right in front of my house that led right to the main street. It was the most wonderful thing in the world. Three miles is a nice bike ride. You could go get mm -hmm. the mail. It was just lived in a nice area with beautiful weather. So I'm going to hop on my bike. And so I hop on my bike and it was Carol and her two kids on the bike path okay. in front of me. So we're, I ride nice and slow with them and talk to the kids and we have this conversation and and then carol says you know that summer when we were going out i saw we saw so many animals do you remember how many animals we saw and i said yeah we we would go hiking all the time we lived in this beautiful okay. place a culture of hiking we saw bears and moose and all kinds of animals and she was just and i, and I said you know i'm seeing owls now like i'm seeing a lot of owls these days i didn't i just said them like that's what's been going on in my life and so so okay. We're on this bike path and the bike path goes straight and there's like a little jog in it and there's a bridge. Okay. And she had her car parked at the bridge and she was just riding the bike path with the kids. It's a easy place to ride. There's no traffic, no cars on it. And, and so she's parked her car. So we're approaching this and I look up ahead and I'm with the two little kids and an owl full daylight, which is very unusual, flies across the path, across my path, the path. There's a path. Right. I'm on a path. All crosses my path. And the, none, nobody else saw it but me. I said, I took to the two little kids, let's go find the owl. They, they had like, no idea what I was talking owl. about. So let's go find them. So we walked up along the path and the path had like, the, the path had trees right next to it. And so we're walking along and, it, and we knew it was on this side of the path. And and we found it and there it was. It was a, it's very similar to the little image you have on your picture here. It was a great horned owl. Uh -huh. And it was, it, it was just posing for us. It's, it was, probably less than 10 feet away, maybe five feet away. Like, like if I had taken two steps forward, I could have touched it with my outstretched arm. And so the kids were like, wow, they'd never, you know, like, like, and it yes. was like, wow. So the owl flew off. And this is the part that like, and the mom, Carol had taken their bicycles. Cause we set the bicycles down at the bridge okay. and across the bridge, found the owl. And then Carol came up to the bridge and said, you know, come on, let's get in the car. Let's go. And the little girl who was probably nine or something, I guess she would have been, she, she yells back to her mom, like, mom, do you love Mike? Do you love Mike? <laughs> and and like, it okay. should have been, it should have been like kind of awkward, but it was really I, endearing. And she's like, no, uh -huh. no, we're just good friends. We're just good friends. And, and they drove off. And so that story Right. That story is, has this subtle little details that that sure. I that are that don't make for a great story. I can tell you some other ones, but that's that was something that happened to me, and that I have stories like that of that right. kind of flavor of that intensity that go on and on. And right, on. because it's just the coincidence that you're seeing her with the children, and then you see the owl. It's like, and then the, they, then, then the the just the 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 little girl saying about love. It felt, it felt like it, it elevated the whole experience and charged it with something I did not expect. 
Let me ask you, in that area where originally you were telling me that you had gone camping, were, were there UFO sightings there in that area? Not that I know of, and I've asked around. Okay. Know. Okay. I was Lots just wondering, I was thinking, I wonder, you know, was it that they were trying to give you a message as far as well, the they did UFO give you a message. origin? I had a voice right. in my head that said, this has something to do with UFOs. It was... But let me ask you, at that point, didn't you say, weren't you like, okay, how's that? You know, weren't you kind of perplexed? Like, what's, what's I, the connection? I, I can say unequivocally, like with no doubts, mm -hmm. my life changed. Okay. My life was going on one trajectory. I had okay. an experience of camping with Kristen and owls and my life just changed. And I haven't, I've never been able to go back. Isn't that incredible that you, you know, how you have those uh, markers in your life where you say before this event and after this event, there's this one event. And it's which... not, and it's not that interesting when you get right down to it. We saw some owls going camping. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But it changed my life. Interesting. God, that's incredible. That is incredible because like you said, to some people, you know, sometimes it's something more powerful out of their, you know, maybe a. God knows things out of their control, but this, like you said, is more subtle. And it, and out of the face of it, you would think, okay, it was nice, it was interesting. But I guess now, in hindsight, you say, from this point onward, is when things changed for me, taking me in a different direction. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. My, my and it's been so. What you know, honestly, like I lost some friends. You know, okay. people were like, oh, yeah, yeah, Mike's gone off the deep end. And I found a bunch of new <laughs> friends. Okay. And and I and I, no one's ever said anything mean to my face. I don't know what okay. they're saying behind my back, but no one's ever said anything to my face. Okay. And um, and I, the richness of my life has changed enormously. In the, so okay. so I, I have been going to UFO conferences and, mm -hmm. and, and someone asked me like, well, now that you're doing this work and how, you know, like you. Like, how, how has your life changed? And that was a good question. I had to think. And I said, I now live in a magical universe. Right. Yeah. You see things differently. It's like, you know, if you, when you have the eyes to see. Yeah. And I'm very open. And, it, and the world is, is granting me, is like reflecting back that magic. Like, Mike, what were the stories that you were getting? Like you said, all of a sudden I'm getting these stories. What were the stories of people? noticing a tie in between seeing an owl or something and was it that they saw a UFO they had a UFO experience or was it like how did they tie in and realize okay there's there's a connection here between these two things oh I mean it's like so this is one of the very first ones I've gotten I have since met this fellow he contacted me through email and and, okay. and he lived in New York City and I have friends in New York City so when I was in I used to live in New York City so when I met him I was visiting friends in New York. We, we talked. And so this fellow's name is Derek and he was camping in the desert of Arizona. He was with a friend and okay. it was nighttime and the stars are spectacular in the desert. He looks up at the sky and there's a, there looks up at a cactus, a big cactus and an owl staring down at them from this cactus, him and his friend. Right. Yeah. And he's like, wow, that is, and they both got the weird feeling like owls have a sinister vibe sometimes. Wow. They yeah, are heavy. Yeah, they are I not, know. it's not like looking at a bunny rabbit. Wow. Right. They got a, they got an aura about them. So the owl, um, looks at him for a little bit and they're like intimidated and the owl flies off. And a moment later, a triangle shaped UFO flies over their campsite, mm. totally silent. And he described how it flew in and hugged the terrain. They were like in a Canyon. Okay. And the, this triangle craft, like flying curiously slow, like hugged the Canyon. He fought to like try to describe how it was moving. Right. And then we talked and like, so what else is going on in your life? And he said, well, like a few days later, I was driving in the car. We got off the camping trip and we had a sunroof in the car and, and there was a like a bright light that followed us, you know, right above the sunroof. Like it wasn't wow. a star, it was daylight. And I'm like, okay. And then anything else? And he said, mm, this is something, this is something. So he talked a bunch of things. He talked about having dreams about being lifted out of bed and being passed through the okay. walls. And they were very subtle kind of things that like, I'm not, I'm just one person and it's not my job to tell someone if they've had UFO contact. I, the term mm -hmm. abduction is kind of heavy handed. It doesn't quite fit everyone's experiences. So I, I, right. I use that term begrudgingly sometimes because it's the only word we have, but UFO contact or however you want to say it. So he said, Oh, I had dreams of being floated out of my bed and through the wall by little beings. 
I'm like, okay, well that, that as a, someone who does UFO research, that like little red flag goes up in my mind yeah. here when you say that. So, and then he said something that at the time I just was like, what? He said, oh, I had a spiritual awakening right, right around this time. Wow. And I, and I, that, is in, that is tied into this whole thing. People will say, I had a spiritual awakening. Like, so I say, what was going on in your life before your all sighting or your UFO sighting? Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my life was going on this one way. What happened afterwards? Oh, I had a spiritual awakening. And okay. I, and I, so um, here's a story that, that I just got recently. Okay. And this is, so a woman contacts me and she's, she pulls into her driveway at night and she's on her phone talking with her father. She pulls in the driveway and there's what she th at first thinks is a little child in the driveway. And then it opens its wings and it flies up into a branch and it's an owl. Oh, oh for she, a minute that was like, what? A dad, what? Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So this, it was an owl, but it was just in the headlights. It, she thought it was a child. Okay. So she flies up. So the owl flies up to a tree and she, the, there's a, her son is in the house. So she goes to, and she, she gets on the phone and says, get out here right now. There's an owl in the yard. So the owl comes out and this owl flies off the branch comes down with its talons and touches her hair. And the little wow. boy is like, mom, or he was a teenager. He's like, mom, are you okay? And she said, oh, no, no, it was, I'm fine. It was really gentle. It was really gentle. So after that, she says she went to a, to a, a Little League game. The son played Little League. And there was just another parent in the stands. And she happened to be sitting next. And she, brought it, she knew him from the scene, the, the Little League. And she asked the woman, like, what, you know, like, how's things going? And the woman said, well, I got some health issues and I need, I, I need someone to donate a kidney. And the, the woman says, I'll, I'll donate, I'll give you mine. And the lady's like, well, that's, it doesn't work that way. But I mean, we have to, you'd have to go through a test and we have to be compatible biologically right. and stuff like that. And she said, I'll take the test. So she takes a test and the doctor, like, it takes a little while for the test to come back. And the doctor says, like, is this, is this your sister? What? So no, it's not my sister. No, it's like, well, okay. Cause it's like, you are, I would actually say, is this your twin sister? You're so biologically compatible. And she, she got the, um, she, she did the, uh, she donated her kidney. She gave her kidney to this that other woman. Incredible. So, and then later, so I'm, so, so let's go back to the event in the driveway. Okay. A few days later, she goes hiking with a friend. And they hike the same trail all the time. And the sun went down and they get back to their car. And as they get back to the car, they look up in the sky and there's these like bright lights like flying over their, their, the parking lot. And she's got pictures of it. It's really not much to see. It's these old dots in the sky. Okay. And she says, well, there's, and, and these bright lights were in the sky and we like, here's the picture. But, and then she said, oh, and everything in the parking lot turned red. Okay. Like, it's like, what? And she's like, well, this asphalt turned red and it, and the cars all turned red and the trees all turned red and the sky turned red. Everything turned red. And she's got pictures of like, it looks like, it looks like someone took red cellophane and they took mm -hmm. pictures of the parking lot through red cellophane. And then I asked, and then I asked the question that I ask all the time, what was, what was going on in, in your life leading up to the sighting, which would be the owl sighting. Cause that came first. She okay. was on my, I was on the phone with my father and said, what were you talking about? She said, I had just made the decision to, to, um, give up my kidney. Oh, wow. So, so this is, this is the flavor. That's a very subtle story, right? There's no flying, yes. there's, there's no bright flying saucers in it. There's a weird little dots and light in the sky and there's the detail of the, everything turning red. But I mean, this, this owl touched her head. That, that's incredible because you don't, I, I've, I've never even heard of that, you know, God knows, yeah, they're birds of prey, but normally they leave humans out of it. And um, I mean, that's that's like to have to touch the top of your head. So yes. Um, so here, this is this. Is, I talk to people all the time on the phone, and I talk to people, and I ask the question. So one of the questions I ask is, "Do you have any healings, healing abilities?" And when I'm doing when I when I do, I'll like to have a piece of paper and, and a clipboard when I talk to people on the phone, and I don't okay. write down much. I write their phone number and the date and their names spelled correctly. So if they ever get back to me, I can look. It's usually a page of like quick notes I can send them just if I ever talk to them again. But on the corner of that page, whenever I talk to someone, I write Reiki. Okay. Like Reiki therapy. Mm -hmm. So these people are contacting me. They've had owl and UFO stories. Owl and UFO. 
Wow. And then I say, I just wait. And I say, so like, what are you doing for work? And they're like, well, I'm a Reiki therapist. Or they'll say, oh, I just got my Reiki 3 certification. Or, oh, I'm doing, if it's not Reiki, it's some other healing modality. Okay. They're doing some hands-on uh -huh. healing or something like that. I didn't okay. have to ask the lady who, I didn't have to ask the lady if she has healing abilities, the lady okay. who gave up her kidney. Uh -huh. Right. I mean, it doesn't get more, it doesn't get more direct than like, oh, like take my kidney for your health. I'm going to heal well, you by giving you, know you my what? kidney. It's not only that, it's that she was such a com compatible match. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it's, a, it's like, you can't, we, anytime you take these stories apart, like uh -huh. there's, it's not just one coincidence. It's like 15 coincidences all jammed right. together. All of them right. as improbable as the one before, like leading up to it. Yeah. So, so the people I talk with, that have UFO and owl experiences. Now I, I need a staff, which I don't have. I would love to have like a staff of like statistical, you know, people who do st st statistical analysis at a college level, like look at my files and mm -hmm. go through my cape. My files are pretty tidy, but I have never right. crunched the numbers, but I will say with, without, like, I don't know exactly, Okay. but I'm going to say it's 50%, if not more of the people who have, Owl and UFO experiences, owls and UFOs, 50% of them are Reiki healers. That, that's that's incredible. That That is, I don't know where to go with. So I can speculate on what that might mean. Right, and, right. And like how, how interesting it is. It doesn't surprise they, me anymore. Yeah. Right. Like, like the, the, you could say, okay, the odds on this are, that's. 50% that's, well, of the normal population is not Reiki healers. Right. Exactly. But these are the ones that 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 the sources for the story, the people that are contacting you, that are having these experiences. This mm -hmm. is the common denominator. They're having a UFO slash the Al experience, and of course, these are all people that don't know each other. It's not like they don't know each other. Community yeah. of Reiki people that are calling me. You know, they're independently coming from different sources. And like you said, when you get into that conversation, or oh, what do you do? Oh, I do Reiki. Uh, yeah. So within, so I think we read off a little list that I'll show up along with psychedelics yeah. and meditation yes. and death. And, and one of them, it would be shamanic initiation. Right. So there's, there's a culture, there's a, there's a, a, like a brethren or a brotherhood or a community of shamans, mm -hmm. people who study to be shamans. And there's like tiers of shamans. I think some people are, you know, there's someone in a village in Brazil in the jungle may have a different definition of what shaman means than someone right. who lives in a, in a neighborhood in Ohio that mm -hmm. works as a shaman. But, but I would argue that there's a core commonality Yes, within that community. The owl is well understood as a totem animal that shows up around the time of shamanic initiation. It's well understood. Right. And, so, and I would say, you know, you always, like I said, I'm thinking the 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 norm you you know the 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 owl is wise okay or bearer of knowledge and then of course there's the other one which was citing an owl was a portent of death mm -hmm. okay those were like the kind of like not not that it brought it it was just that it's telling you it's giving you a heads up but it's it was it it's always had a reputation as being a mystical animal mm -hmm. Well, there's other right. mystical animals, but that one is certainly mystical in a different way than, let's say, a deer or an eagle. Well, it's almost like, I don't know if it's the way it looks at you. <laughs> it's like That's that. certainly, yeah, every, so there's, everyone recognizes the power of an owl when right. it looks at you. Yeah. Yes. Different than but, when a deer looks at you or different than oh, when sure. an owl. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then, so the mythology of the owl would be, and I've, um, do you know, um, Maxwell Jordan or Jordan Maxwell. He died a few years ago. He was a researcher. Name sounds familiar, but right off the bat, yeah, no. Yeah, he he died a few years ago. He was he's been doing he was in his 80s when he died, and and he was doing um like esoteric research in the 1960s. And, and okay. so he just died a, maybe two or three years ago. So I I he I got his phone number. Someone gave me his phone number. There was a point, man. I was like, I was on fire. If I wanted to talk to someone, I was gonna call him. So I got his phone number uh, and I called him up and he said, Who are you? Like, I what's just, the worst like, he could do? Hang up on me. <laughs> yeah, like what's what's the worst thing? So who we talked to he said, Okay, listen, what are you like before you hang up on me? I asked to have what asked to have, I have to ask one question. Like, like what's the what's the symbolic meaning of the owl? And he goes, The owl 
can see into the darkness. And, and uh. everyone knew that from ancient man to present day. So they can see into the darkness. They can fly in the forest in complete darkness. And that right. very quickly turns. So there's a metaphor for flying into the land of the dead and flying into the land of the ancestor for flying into the land of the gods. Yes. Right. So the forest meant something. The nighttime meant something much different than it does now. We have electric light bulbs. The night doesn't have sure. its mystique at all anymore. Right. But at a certain chapter in the human history, when all those legends and all those mythologies rose up and 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 played their important role in our lives, the the night was something very frightening. Sure, and, sundown, and a place of testing, the coming yeah. of night. It was like everybody come inside. Yeah. So the owl could see into the dark could go to the land of the ancestors, could go to that other realm, the land of the dead, and then it would return with a message. So it was well understood. It was a messenger. Now that that mythology, was in the, and then you have also the uh, Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, mm -hmm. had an owl as a companion. It was called a little owl. And there's a there's a species of owl called the little owl. And there are these cute little owls. They're about this big. Yeah, one, time, one time I had one in another house I lived in. It was an old farmhouse. And it came, we, I'm assuming it came in through the chimney. And we had a big flat screen TV that sat on the mantelpiece. All of a sudden when we look up and there's this little owl sitting. Wait a minute. You had an owl us. in your house? Oh yeah. And, and it was like, okay. And it's just sitting there looking at us and we're like, okay. So we had like big French doors. We opened it, you know, like you need to go. <laughs> so we, we assumed that it was, it had come through in through the chimney. Every once in a while, some bird would do that. Just sat there. It just looked at us and we're like, okay, you gotta go. And so sure he, enough, it didn't made a beeline and it went out the front door. So what type of work are you doing now? I mean, you're hosting a podcast on the paranormal. What I mean Yes. What what kind of work have I done? Well, let's see. Um, I was been a hypnotherapist. I mean, I've had my regular job, you know, all my life, but I was a hypnotherapist. I've been a paranormal investigation all my life. I've I'm very familiar with Reiki. I've studied Reiki, but besides that, that I really, really haven't truly been a Reiki practitioner. But I always used to do alternative hypnosis, you know, not I did traditional as in, but I also did alternative hypnosis, uh, a lot of the things of that nature. So, okay. yeah, you, you ask around how many people have had an owl in their house. It's I, not many. Really? Oh, oh it's not was... many. And then I've so I've had a like so people, the people I talk with, like people uh -huh. come to me all the time with owl stories owls getting in your house yeah. so that you had an owl in your house and you're hosting a paranormal show yeah. and you're oh, doing that, hypnotherapy that and ghost and hunting there's, and... A, there's an owl out here and we you know we hoot at each other and it was hilarious because i had to cut down a tree here a big oak because we were afraid it was gonna fall where we lived so and i got a big ceramic chick i have chickens also and i put a big ceramic rooster on there and the first couple of nights it came out you could tell it was i'm trying to figure out why this chicken didn't move, you know, because usually psh, you could tell it was like there, like you could tell I was looking at it and I was like, yeah, go ahead, try to take that. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it's like, but yeah, she, and, and I have a feeling she, we've got like a, a wooded area. She's either got a nest or something close by, but yeah, we, I hear her on and off and hooting and stuff like that. So it's a big one too. It's a real big one. Like when you see her in the dark, she's like, whoa, it's an impressive owl. Yeah. 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 So that you had an owl in your house. Yeah, but it was what, like you said, it was one of those little ones. Oh, it's still an owl. I count owl t-shirts. They're real boxes. cute. They almost yeah. look like little, like a little toy almost. They're so yeah. small and petite. Yeah. Yeah. So that doesn't surprise me. Okay. How interesting. Yeah. They're, they're, um, they're very cute. Very cute. Um, but you know, we didn't again, you know, at that point, I you know, you don't read anything into it as in, hey, it got in through the chimney. And it just came out and it, like I said, it just perched on the edge of the flat screen and looked at us. I was like, oh, okay. But um, yeah. And again, it's what you're saying. Sometimes in, in as, as if there was any synchronicities around that time, that moment's been lost. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Unless sometimes yeah. you're really looking for some event and you tie it in right now and you could kill me and I can't tell you what I was doing or what was going on with me around that time probably i was writing a book i take it i probably was but um yeah it's it's one of those things i personally i've always liked owls i know there's like you said sometimes owls have this um 
not, not, not sinister, but scary connotation, even with Halloween and stuff like that. But I've never personally, I've never thought of owls that way. I, you know, I think they're, they're very mysterious, but in a, in a, how can I tell you? Like, I like that. You know, I, I like, I've never, the mystique is not a scary mystique as far as I'm concerned. So and I'm not, you, that's why I'm not surprised when you're saying a UFO. That was like, wow. Why that's very well, it's well understood within the field with people see owls in con connection with UFOs. Very well understood. So I didn't invent that. I just went, no, I just got no, no, totally no. obsessed it, with it. Yeah. It's one of those things. That's why I think it's so fascinating because it's, uh, it almost begs the question, is there a connection between the owls and the extraterrestrials? Or is this an animal that's cognizant of something? But then at the same time, you're saying somehow or other, it's aware of, how can I say, maybe a turning point coming in your life or something that you're doing in your life that you're thinking, is it aware of metaphys on a metaphysical level? How's that? Exactly. Yeah. Like I, 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 I try not to, I try not to, to, come up with the whys like right. how did it happen because i'll never sure. know right why is of why course. did the owls be like people say is that why did the owl show up at that moment i'm like well i can't answer that but i can say that within that moment it has a powerful sort of dream logic quality right. and i use that term a lot dream logic because there's there's kind of like um you know in fiction mm -hmm. if you're writing a fiction story you would want to you would want to add those little details to add drama to the story, but they show sure. up in real life. And what I'm finding is, so the owls, and I should be able to do this five things. I should be able to do it right off the top of my head. Um, so the owls show up with associated, if highly charged human events, I'll call these. One of them is mm -hmm. UFOs, which are highly right. charged, right? And the other one is powerful synchronicities. Okay. Um, meditation. I got a lot of stories about people meditating and seeing owls. Mm -hmm. um, shamanic initiation. Okay. And um, did I say death? Yes. The, so that's five. I think I did that right. Right. And and do oh, so you think what, that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So what I'm saying is that the UFO is just another highly charged human event, right? So okay. it's not nothing special about the the UFO because the owl is showing up at the time of these other highly charged markers. I have so one woman here's this is this one woman, um, was called me up. I was with my girlfriend at the time. Her name was Andrea and we were sitting on the couch and it's morning and we're drinking coffee and it's winter time. And, and we're in upstate New York and, and she says, my friend, um, Suzanne just emailed me and, and look at this picture. Do you know, she's asking us if, if this owl is okay. And she shows me the owl and it's like a picture of an owl, like right on her back porch, sitting on a chair in the snow. And I'm like, well, it looks fine to me. Like, what's the story? Mm -hmm. And so Suzanne says, I was meditating and I opened my eyes and this owl was directly in line with my eyes on the back porch. When I opened my eyes meditating, I said, okay, what was, what were you meditating about? And I said, it's the anniversary of my mother's death. And I still haven't gotten wow. over my mother's death and I'm grieving. And I was okay. meditating to, to come to terms with it. And basically to come to the end of the grieving process. Wow. This is just, so you know, this is very common, very common. Almost so, like that. So she opens her eyes. She meditates for her mom on her mom's birthday. Yeah, it was the anniversary of her mother's birthday, not the, the mother's death, but it was her mother's birthday, mm -hmm. and and uh, she opens her eyes and there's an owl. And I said, like, you go, you open that window and you talk to that owl like it's your mom. And I I said that because that happens all the time. People do that all the time. Sure. So she does, and she said the owl like sat there for a little bit and it flew off to a tree and it sat in this tree and watched the house all day long. And so That's there's, incredible. there's no, so she was, and she said, if I had been sitting a little over this way, meditating and I opened my eyes, I wouldn't have seen the owl. The owl was mm -hmm. like all the way at the other end of the long hallway, right in the window, centered in the window. And if I had been just like this, I wouldn't have seen it. But it, when I opened my eyes, the owl was there. I've heard a lot of stories just like that. Right. That, that like you said, the synchronicity, it's difficult to ignore it. Because any other day, maybe. Well, but, she, her intention was so, yeah. And what you said, Mike, that you yourself have tested it. In other words, you said, if it doesn't happen this way, you know, I, in other words, I'm going to not let my imagination run away. If I don't, like you said, if it crosses my path, not that if I see it, you know, off in the 
in the field or anything. And you still had some type of verification. Mm -hmm. And that was because you were, that was your intention. It was like, I need to make sure that I'm not the one that seems, you know, something, you know, I'm not seeing these synchronicities because I'm making them up as I go along, you know, or I'm tying them in, even though they're not. Yeah. There's lots of owls, right? If you want to see owls, you can go really good. Just walk, get up in the morning and count how many owls you are. There's owls on billboards and coffee yeah. cups and, and they're all over the place. So, so yes. they're, they're like a little thing that show up in our lives all the time. But, but I'm looking at how they connect to the highly charged human experiences. So that, and what I'm finding is like in Shakespeare, there's like a, in um, Julius Caesar, there's an owl that shows up before a death. And also in Macbeth, mm -hmm. an owl shows up before a death. I'm not finding that. I got a couple small examples of that. And I have a, someone sent me a story and they, their father had a heart attack. Okay. And they, 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 the ambulance came and they wheeled him into the back of the ambulance and the daughter got in the back right. of the ambulance with her father. And then right out the door, right before they closed the door, there was an owl on a branch looking straight into the back of the ambulance and the father died. So it wasn't the owl's fault that the father died, but that was that detail was I thought was very <laughs> excuse me. You know what? And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this. You remember, I wanna say this song was out like in the 70s. You could and I you could kill me right now. I, I don't know who what the name of the group was, but it was basically the the gist of was that they sighted an owl and they knew. Oh my oh. god. That they somebody was gonna die. Uh, they, they, it, part of the song was the how I've seen the owl or the owl's been hooting three nights in a row outside or something like that or sighted. Oh my god! It was one of those songs. I want to say early seventies. Oh Marlene, I wish I could remember. Oh, right is now. it Wildfire? I can't remember. Wildfire, song. yes. And there's a, but so it was the horse dies, wasn't it? The horse dies or the no? She's, no, no, no. Oh, because no, it wasn't. Because I'll be riding Wildfire as a horse. Right. And right in the beginning, there's an owl hooting three nights in a row. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. And it was like that that thing that was like the owl's letting you know that this is going to happen. And he's like, you know, his song, of course, is like, this is the portent of death. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was like, I, that was one of those songs when you start talking about it, I go, wait a minute. I said, but that was. So that's, I, that's right in, that's right in mythology. That's right in, and nobody has to like, like the person who wrote that song didn't mm -hmm. like. Go. I'm certain they didn't go through like a book on mythology and say, hmm, I, yes. let me." They just wrote it from their heart. It just emerged mm -hmm. on the page like that. But, um, but I'm not finding many stories where owls show up before a death. I'm finding lots where they show up after a death, and it's often associated with a form of the ending of the grieving process. Right, and that's and the thing is that sometimes that's a form of healing. We we look at things as far as the symbol the symbology of it. You know what it means to that person. In other words, that person that's grieving sees the symbol of the owl in a certain way that maybe a person that wasn't grieving would just see the owl for mm -hmm. what it is an owl, an animal, whatever. But it's the context of that person that what that symbol means to them at that moment in time. You know, whether and like that, that story you just said where she's meditating about the death of her mom and coming to the end of what she's hoping is going to be a grieving process. And she sees that owl and it's almost like to reassure her it's okay. Oh, <coughs> excuse was, me. So, so this one woman, con so here, look, 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 so this is my own story <laughs> and, me. and I've told this many times. And, and at first I was kind of shy telling this story, mm -hmm. but I really feel like it's an important story and I, and I'm happy to share it. Um, my mom died in 2012, okay. oh, excuse me, 2013. And, um, I was visiting my sister in North Carolina. Well, I was uh, when, when my mother she had an aneurysm and lost consciousness, and my brother and sister and I all went to to stay with my sister. And my mom was living right down the road from my sister at an assisted living facility, and she had really good care right up until the very end. And and so my brother, sister, and I would take turns sitting by my side, my mom's bed, and she was unconscious. And so my sister and I were together when, when my mom died and my brother was arrived shortly thereafter we contacted him. And so we were, I was holding my mom's hand and then one side of the bed and my sister was holding my mom's hand on the other side of the bed. It was really a touching, moving experience, but it happened at like 
four in the morning and the next we didn't get any sleep and then you know we were like uh, and so that whole next day we were trying to take naps and trying to sleep or we kind of like there's lots to do sure. and lots to plan and just me my brother and sister and so that night we sat in my sister's backyard and she lives in the south and it was a pretty porch and and her next door neighbor or the woman across the street came over her name was ruthie now at that time this would have been 2012 i was already doing this owl research Okay. And my brother and sister had no idea what to make of it. I would get up in the morning with my sister and I would open my email inbox and I would read these stories. Here's another story, Jeannie, like one more story. And I read this owl story and she had no idea what to think. My brother, I think my brother was a little intimidated by it, a little scared. He did not like me to bring it up. So I, I wisely don't bring it up very often. So I, so Ruthie, the next, the lady across the street, my sister's best friend is sitting on the back porch with us. So I'm in the middle of the couch. My brother's on one side and my sister's on the other. And I'm, was the kid brother, right? So, okay. so Ruthie's sitting across from us and Ruthie says, Jim, Jean, Mike, I want to tell you that I know there is an afterlife. And I know with certainty because of an experience I had with an owl. And my, oh, sister, boy. my sister literally goes like, she does this thing where she puts her hand over her hands. No, 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 I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And my brother, like my brother, that gives me this look like. Like, did you tell her something? Did, did you tell you, her to say Did you put her up to this? Like, was this right. like something? And I'm like, and, and you could see poor Ruthie's face was like, what did I just say? Like, and here she is. Right. And I'm like, Ruthie, you don't know it, but I've been doing this owl research and owls seem to be connected to like highly charged human experiences, including the, so like, but I want to hear your story. So she tells my brother, sister, and I, she says, I was grieving the death of my father. Daddy died and I was grieving the death. And, and I had her write this message, write this letter out. Like afterwards, I said, can you write mm -hmm. this in your own words? Because I, and she did. And she, this was well before the book came out. She was one of those people that just called it a messenger in the story she wrote. So here's the story she told. She's, she, there's a nature trail that goes around the neighborhood. It's a cute little okay. nature trail and people walk their dogs on it and it just goes through the trees and stuff. So she's, she would walk every day through the nature trail as part of her grieving process to get, and then every day she'd pass an owl on the same branch. Okay. And she got, she stopped one day and the owl hooted at her and she stopped right in front of it. And she thought the owls don't come out during the day. What, am, what is this? And she looked up at the owl and they locked eyes and she said, are you my daddy? And right at that moment, all her grief evaporated. Okay. And the owl flew off. And she says, I know there's an afterlife because of she because of the messenger of Right. And and I am convinced, like if like I feel like I can't prove this, but mm -hmm. in my heart, I feel convinced that that story at that moment. That's incredible. Was presented not to me. I didn't need mm -hmm. any proof, right? I've already I already read the thousand letters and talked to a hundred hundreds of people about their experiences. I didn't need any proof, but my brother and sister needed a story, and there is no one on earth that is that that would be a better, more heartfelt, thoughtful, believable person than right. my sister's friend Ruthie. Absolutely, there was yeah. no way they could look at her and, or blame you. In other words, yeah, yeah exactly. So that was done, that was staged. I feel that event was staged for the benefit of my brother and sister. Exactly. And you know what's really interesting? Because in these stories, it's almost, you know how people, I want to say they want to end their grieving, but they're thinking, "Am I? is the timing right? Like, should I maybe oh, yeah, continue it's a to tough, grieve? Yeah. Is it okay to stop grieving or move on? Or And it's almost like telling them it's okay. You know, yeah. or, you, or that question that a lot of times people have about people that have passed on is like, are they okay? Yeah. Without, and it's almost like, it's okay. We're okay. You know, go on with your life. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. don't get caught up with the guilt thing. Uh, is everybody's different? You know, you, I, you, some people are more, how can I tell you? Some people grieve right away. Other people delay it. They hold on to it, you know. Or they suppress it and until they can handle it. And then, the, you know, the people that are very, you know, vocal and you can see they're grieving and there's others that are like totally internalized. But uh, let me ask you, and it almost seems like a lot of times these people have this, these moments when they're by themselves. 
is did you find that that's happens more often or or no oh i think there's been many people seeing owls together but lots of stories are people on their own so but i got a bunch and of the reason why together. i'm asking is where they've had the sighting of an owl and one person interprets it one way and the other one's like oh it's an owl oh i got a good story for that yeah okay so so um i was at a there was an event in maine mm-hmm. probably 2014 so 2014 there was an event in maine and this was at, at a, I spoke at a conference about owls. So everyone was talking about owls, lots of owl talk. And that was, it was early on. That was the first year I was speaking publicly. I'm from a stage on the owl stuff. That's nine years ago. So, um, and this, after the conference was a very small little conference. The woman who ran the conference, her name is Audrey. She went up to, she invited everyone up to like a little lake house in Maine. So it was a pretty okay. lake on the, on, it was, it wasn't right on the lake, but you just walked down the path and there was a lake right there. And so it was this real pretty house and there was a bonfire at night and everyone hung out. And so um, two of them were my friends, Jack and Suzanne. And just Suzanne has been very open about her UFO contact experiences. And her husband, Jack, has also had his own experiences. Okay. And um, at that lake house thing, I just I remember Jack was sitting around. It was this totally sunny beautiful day and he's in the lounge chair and he's got a beer and he's like you know i'm his dad died a few years earlier he said you know i just i feel like i'm turning into my dad like i feel like i just hear my dad's voice coming out of my mouth i'm turning into my dad and i feel like my dad's here i just feel like my dad's here right now this is the kind of thing he would have liked and then that night there was a um like a like a ufo sky watch Okay. Like, and so I was there and it was actually kind of funny because there's all these, I'm going to be cautious to say, there's a lot of women and they were all kind of like together and they were all pointing the same spot in the sky. And they were like, oh, that's, there's going to be, there's going to be a light there. There's, it's right there. It's right at that point in the sky. And I was with, I was kind of like, like, I almost felt like I was interrupting. I was kind of like, this doesn't feel right that I'm here. Okay. You know, like, it just felt like this is there. And it was funny. They were kind of like. Like one woman would say, let's imagine ourselves in a bubble of white light. And like, no, let's. And they were all kind of one upping each other with their little kind of aphorisms and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is their thing. I'm going to step away. Uh-huh. And I walked away and I got about 10 steps out of the circle with my back. And they all went, whoa. And there was this big, bright flash in the sky. And they said it was like a like a, a million watt um, lighthouse that just kind of okay. blink, just passed and kind of blinked. So it wasn't just like okay. a, like a click. It was like it was right. Kind of, and they got so excited, and they were all yippee. And so two women were on the beach. Okay. Pam and Carol were there, and they were good friends. Pam and Carol were there on the beach, and it's about midnight, and it's getting late, and they go, "Hey, we saw it, yippee!" And they all walk away, and everyone goes back, and 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 Pam and Carol stay on the beach. And this is like October or late September in in maine far north and it's kind of like by the time september comes along and it's nighttime it's like you're right by the water it was cold and clammy like it was like you Mm -hmm. didn't want to hang out there so they're on the little beach chairs and they're talking and and then all of a sudden they look at their watches and it was about a midnight when the they saw the flash and then they they just sat there and chatted and they figured they'd been talking for a few minutes and they looked at the clock was four in the morning it's like what the four hours go Uh like they didn't fall asleep right and i was like i was there i wouldn't want to sit in a chair for four hours like exactly. I would be like cold and clammy and I wouldn't want it. And so they went back. And so all the, everyone at the beach house at the, at the lake house was staying in tents. They had a big giant yard and they kind of had like uh, all these tents and they're all cram- crammed together. So they went to their tent and they had to kind of tiptoe through the other tents and get there. So Carol and, and Pam are sleeping in the same tent together. And Carol whispers to Pam, she says, let's ask the owl if we really did see something tonight. And as soon as she said that, there was a loud hooting. Oh my God. Like immediately. And then the hooting got closer. And the, the owl was right on, like on a branch right across on, above them. And there was literally branches falling down onto their tent as this owl was hooting really loud. And it was a barred owl. We got up the okay. next morning and we looked, they can go online and listen to owl things. They found me. I was sleeping on the other side of the house in uh-huh. the yard. I didn't hear any of this. And then they, they found me the next morning like, Mike, Mike, we've been looking for you. We, what kind of owl was this? And then we talked about it and then we were right there and the branches. So Jack and Suzanne were in the next tent next to them. 
So two tents side by side. Okay. Owl right above him, hooting super loud, branches falling on top of the tent, like unmistakable. It was a barred owl, which is the loud, loudest North American owl. Like it sounds like a like a chimpanzee in a Tarzan movie. And the sticks landing on their tent. And Jack immediately gets his phone out and looks at the time. It was 420. His father died on April 20th. So 420. Oh, wow. So the owl immediately he recognizes this is connected to my father and my father's okay. death. Immediately. Okay. Owl sticks land on the tent. He sits up, grabs his phone, 420. This is connected wow. to my father's death. The next tent over, Carol says, let's ask the owl if we really oh, saw a my UFO. God. And so they're side by that, side. That right there, they must have been, I imagine they couldn't have gone back to sleep because I wouldn't be able to go back to sleep. No, they were totally, they were totally like wiggy the next morning. And I, I was bet. the owl guy. I had talked about owls. They were like, where's Mike? We got to find him. And so when I, I walked up, like, like, hey, everyone, good morning. And where's my coffee? And then they're like, Mike, we got to talk to you. So yeah, they were totally, but so side by side, two totally different symbolic meanings to the, to the same right, owl totally. directly over them. And it had, yeah, you know, depending on, it meant something different to the people. And it was, but it was the same event. It was the in same other words. All. It was the same, yeah. So that's incredible. And it's true. The symbology behind it is different depending on whatever is happening with that person. You know, what's, what's the connection? Like for, like you said, that man, it had to do with his dad's death. And they posed a question, which is like, wow, talk about impeccable timing kind of thing. <laughs> so, so I just did a podcast a few weeks ago and this, his name is Juan and there's a podcast that's called Juan on Juan. It was a great interview. So this guy, he says, you know, he was a young guy and he says, I knew I was going to be doing the podcast with you this today. We did it. I can't remember what time it was like in the evening, afternoon or something. And then uh -huh. last night I was with my wife and our, my little boy, the boy was like five. So he's little and we're in the backyard and I knew I was going to be talking to this guy about owls tomorrow. And we're in the backyard. And he said, I know we're going to see an owl tonight. I know we're going to see an owl tonight. Like, I just know it. And the little boy goes, Dad, look. And he points up. And there's a floating, glowing orange orb floating wow. through the backyard. Wow. So my research is about owls and UFOs. I get this okay. all the time. People are saying, I'm going to see an owl. And then they see a UFO. That's... So, so. That happened the night before we spoke. So there's the oh, owl and UFO getting mixed up. Let me I tell you. Uh oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's you the phone? An, no, you know what it is? It's uh, an oh, Amber it's alert. The Amber alert. Oh, yeah. The cops yeah. You know, even though you've got your phone silenced, the Amber alert will go off. It yeah. doesn't, you know, bypasses the thing. I got to look yeah. to see, but. Oh, so there we have an alarm. We have an alarm. Like I know. Getting it's like, to this high point. No, of the my, conversation. my, my owl, I say that. I say I say she. I really don't know if it's a she. I'm just making. You know, I just gave it. Identify. Gave it that gender. But she. You know she. Like I said, usually I hear her hooting when the uh, sounds good. Sun's going down. But she's come out sometimes in the mornings, or I'll hear her hoot, or in the middle of the day, or she'll hear me talking. I kid you not. But I know you're gonna appreciate it because you're an owl guy. I've been out there, and all of a sudden I'll see her fly from over there because I've got these like 500 year old live oaks in my mm -hmm. yard, which are huge, and. She, goes out there it's like she's by the way she's she's done in a couple of my chickens all right and i'm like no you can't you know we have like i'm saying we have like this <laughs> this relationship and um but yeah yeah i know what what you mean and then you know for a while i won't hear from her and then like a couple of days ago what was it yesterday or the day before i remember i heard her hooting and it was like it was like almost in the afternoon i was like wait a minute what are you doing what's up it's like i said normally when I hear her hooting is either sundown or a couple of times, but usually it's around sundown um, or she'll go to this other tree and just like, look at me. And I'm like, yeah, I, I see you. You're not getting any of my chickens. Okay. Sorry. Be on your way. And the big, owls, mice. The, the big owls will show up in daylight. It's not, a, it's not yes, I know. uncommon to see big owls, but the tiny, tiny owls will almost only. Yeah. Ever they, come they, at night. they, yeah. they, yeah, they, 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 but yeah, you can. I, I know she's that. This is her area, her territory, or something in this area, you know. So, but yeah, the it's one of those things that, you know, like everything, you know, you you it's part of nature and you like it. And you know, like I said, she's taken a couple of my chickens, but it is what it is, you know. She's she's being true to her nature. 
but uh, yeah, she hangs out here every once in a while, more often than not. But but I've never tried to, you know, how can I say it? I, I see her or hear her so often oh, that yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, um, I've never tried to make a connection between hearing her and it's like, and anything. It's just like, she's always around on or off uh, out there. But that's, I, let me tell you, I'm so fascinated because again, that UFO, those letters or those messages that you've gotten from people who have a tie in between UFO sightings and the owl thing. That's like, wow. So I um, spoke with a friend. I met this guy at a conference. So I, this is, wow, just, this is one of these stories to tell. It just gets so okay. tangled up and complicated. So I was doing a conference. I was speaking at a conference and Suzanne, this is going to Suzanne. All mm -hmm. this, I got a lot of stories with Suzanne. So Suzanne, uh, from the story, Suzanne and Jack. Okay. So Suzanne was, was in her yard and she'd been hearing what she thought was a baby raccoon. And she realized, no, it's an owl. It's been outside okay. her and Jack's bedroom window night after night after night. So, so she, she hears it one day in the evening and she says, I'm going to go out. She said this, I'm going to get a recording from Mike. So she takes her phone, she puts mm -hmm. on a record and she walks up to the apple tree. It's right on her neighbor's yard, but it's like basically the apple trees. So she stands that's right on the right next to her house. So she stands there and she walks up to the tree to get this owl. And as she walks up to the tree, there's an orange orb that whoosh, glows in the tree. Okay. And then she looks at it for a while and it's about, it's big and bright and glows and then it disappears. So orange orbs show up a lot in this research. Don't ask me why, but then orange orbs, I don't know what they mean. And so right. it disappears. So she's got like a, and she never got the recording of it. It was, it was a, um, Eastern screech owl, which make a funny noise. It sounds like a Barbie horse. The way I describe it, it sounds like a little Barbie sized horse mm -hmm. that Barbie mm -hmm. would ride. And it makes a little whinny, but it sounds like a little, they're little, they're little, they're not that big. They're about this big. Okay. Um, so she, and I, and I was going to tell that story at a, at a conference. It was actually at the, <laughs> so funny. It was at the conference. Okay. Where we, the, the lake house event was. So I'm okay. going to tell the story. So I, I, <laughs> so that night, like before the conference was starting, I was like, because in a presentation, you do a, like a, what do you call them? A, 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 a PowerPoint presentation. You can put sound okay. effects in and stuff like that. And so I was like, I'm going to put a sound effect of the, of the Eastern screech owl. So I could not, I'm pretty good with computers and I've and I got a website and blogs and stuff like that. I could not figure out how to transfer it. You just take it and put it in there. But some reason, mm -hmm. for some reason I couldn't transfer it. And I spent all this time, I stayed up late and I couldn't figure out how to transfer the sound okay. onto the thing. All right. And I, and I got, and I was like, we were driving the next morning. Andrea and I were going to drive to the conference the next morning early, the long drive between upstate New York and Maine. It's like, you know, five hours or something. So I, so I was like, oh, it was super frustrating. So I go to bed at night. And that morning, when I wake up, the sun is just peeking through the window. We're going to get up early. And there's this hooting right outside the window. And I had been listening to it all last night. It was an eastern screech owl. I'd never heard one before. Right out the window, screech, hoots at our window. And Andrea goes, was that an owl? And I'm like, it sure was. Like It's, it's like, and I, it was like, it was basically telling me, you put that thing in the PowerPoint presentation. You get up now and figure out how to do it. Right. So I literally I, I literally had like a laptop and okay. I held it up to my other computer, my desktop, uh -huh. and played it on the laptop and recorded it on the desktop. It was kind of not, you know, it was pretty low tech, but but it was like so anyway, I did it's, it in, it's in it. So I, I give the thing and I say, and then Suzanne heard the noise in the yard and I push the button and it woo, 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 makes this noise. And, and she walks out and she tries to get a picture of her phone and she sees an orange orb and it disappears. And I, Suzanne's in the audience. I'm like, how am I doing, Suzanne? Did that, like, oh, you told it right. Great. And so, so this guy, Mike, comes out of the audience afterwards or comes up to me and, asked, and says, I almost jumped out of my chair when you played that owl sound effect. She said, he has a little boy. He's like a three-year-old boy. He said, I've been hearing that sound coming from the baby monitor of my son's room oh what isn't that oh. spooky and i was like oh so i sat down with this guy i didn't have anything it's like oh and he's so he had all these stories so this guy mike gets back to me uh-huh later and he says 
oh, I have a story to tell you. This this happened, and, and I and I and and so he's telling me on the chat. He's uh -huh. chatting with me, and I'm like, "What's your story?" He says, "Well, I was so these are all dated. All these things are time stamped, right?" And 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 I'm really like the number thing makes me crazy sometimes. So he's telling me this thing, and and he says, "I was um, I was driving home from work." And I was crossing a bridge. This is in Massachusetts. I don't want to use this name. So he's driving across the bridge in Massachusetts. And it's right in town, like right in the city. Mm -hmm. And he comes across the bridge and an owl whoosh, flies right up to his windshield, full daylight, scares the crap out of him. He says, oh my God, I like, oh, I'm scared. And so he has to make a left turn. He's in traffic and he's like, whoa, this owl just whoo. And he's still like, <sighs> he's still kind of wiggy right. about the owl. And he looks over and there's a giant, like football field sized, copper colored, flying saucer hovering above the buildings right next to the road. Oh, he doesn't, nobody sees it. He's in traffic. Nobody's slowing down. He okay. sees it. He's like stuck in traffic. So he has to keep moving. Like he can't stop his car. And it just, he goes past and this thing is kind of like, seems to be rising up and it was a cloudy day and, and he keeps on driving. Mm -hmm. he, and, then, that... and then he says, and then he says, you know what? I was that day. I was, this all happened. I was listening to my MP3 player, I had my phone plugged into my car, listening to the thing through the car stereo. I was listening to a talk that I gave on UFOs and owls. I was like, you were what? listening to a talk on UFOs and owls and you saw a UFO and an owl? And he's like, yeah. Like, like, boom, boom, boom. All happened at the same time. Like oh. he sees the owl, makes a turn, sees the UFO, boom, boom, boom. And, I, and so the timestamp on, I, I said, what? Like I have all these things. I was fastidious uh, these things afterwards. And I was like, oh, this was like A plus kind of like powerhouse event in my life. <laughs> so exactly. I said, what? You saw a UFO and an owl as I was talking about UFOs and owls? And he said, yeah. so that timestamp was at 1234. One, two, three, four. Four. That's and that's incredible. a big important number to me. And this is the guy that heard that sound coming from the baby this monitor. Is the guy who has since become a good friend of mine. He came up and stayed with Andrea and me at the at the inn. We like went on hikes. He's a super great guy. Yeah. So, and oh my God, has he had? He works in a hospital as a as a male nurse. Okay. And okay. and there was all these wildlife pictures on okay. the walls, like just the wildlife natural pictures, and they all had like a single little light. Uh huh. Go up above them. Okay. And and he's walking down, and then the one with the owl, when he would pass it, the light would go flicker, flicker, flicker. flicker. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> he was a billion. So. <laughs> he's had a lot of owl experiences. So yeah, and he's 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 funny, and he's oh my gosh, that so so like how do I like I'm just one person. Like I I make this joke like I like I would love to have a staff to help me with all this I can't go ahead keep up and with parse the all this all this information I, I can't keep up with the letters that people send me these beautiful heartfelt letters and I, and I just feel so bad I just I can't reply to all you of can't them. stay on top of that because people and you know what's really funny I imagine there's got to be people that have never said those stories except to you it's the first line of half of them I bet because I've okay, never told I my husband this to anybody I'm gonna get a funny look I, I've I never told them. my husband I've never told my right. wife I've never told yeah yes. it's like yeah exactly so yes it's almost like, thank God, I could just, I can tell it, you know, and I know that you're going to understand and not, not they look at me like, hey, you know, what's wrong with you? Yes, that happens. And sometimes people, by the way, take stuff like this to their graves, you know, that. I, I think, but I think hopefully the stuff is changing and now, and now there's like, um, like in the community, like people have heard of my book and stuff like that over the last, it's going to be seven, eight years now that the book's been out. So people are kind of familiar with this. Okay. this lore at this point um so here's a story this is i love the stories that don't have any ufos in them i know people i like it i'm like it's like a relief to tell the stories without the ufos in them right. sometimes because it's still it it points to the power of the of the symbolism okay um um a guy gets a hold of me and mm -hmm. he he's him and his family run an apple orchard okay an organic apple orchard and so he's and he goes in the backyard and in the back of the orchard and it's near the forest. And he meditates there sometimes. So he was meditating and in his, and as he was meditating, there's this loud screeching 
booming noise that comes out of the forest. It scares him. He said, the hairs in the back of my neck stood up. Like I was, he said, every part of me wanted to run away. But he said, no, I got to figure out what this is. So he walked into the forest and there was an owl on a branch staring at him right at eye level, like staring at him, like squawk, 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 like chewing him out. Like, how dare you? He said, this owl was looking right at me. He was yelling at me. Okay. And the owl flies off and he goes back to the house and he tells his wife, um, like, oh my God, without meditating on the or apple orchard, I heard this noise. I went in the trees. This owl was mad at, this owl was like mad at me, was screeching at me. And she goes, oh, that's nice, honey. Um, but set the table for dinner. He's like, oh, she doesn't get it. So the kids are at the dinner table and he's got three, I think he's got two kids. And he says, like, I just now, just before dinner, I was in the back of the, in the back by the forest in the back of the orchard. And I heard this noise. I went in the woods and there was an owl. And, and, and it was yelling, it was squawking, it was screeching at me and the kids didn't care at all. Like dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, and then he says, okay, listen, and he gets his camera and he goes to the forest and he says, like, my kids don't believe me. My wife doesn't believe me. I need a picture. And this owl flies and lands on a branch right in front of him, gets a picture and the owl flies off. And I use that picture oh. in my talks. So the question, what was going on before the event? Okay. And he's, so I asked him, what was going on the, before the event? And he said, I was meditating on if there was a God, if there was God. Wow. <laughs> Let me tell you something, that everybody gets that type of answer you hear. A big, well, I don't think everyone weird. gets it, but I yeah, get I know. Like, uh, yeah, so. yeah, let me tell you something, he's pretty brave to go into the forest and find out what that was. I'd be like, well, hmm. it was a barred owl. It was the same kind of owl that makes a really, really loud noise. And, and I've heard them. They sound like that's the same noise that Jack and Suzanne heard. And, and, uh, oh, here's so one more. So this is gets so crazy. Okay. So, so Jack, I'm going to go. So Jack from Jack and Suzanne, he's, okay. he's, he was working and he was, he, and he was, he took a break and he, he went and sat in his car and he was reading my first book, the messengers. Okay. And he was almost to the end of it. And he just like, Oh, let me just say, so he stepped out of the spot where he was working. He sat in his car. It was cold at night. And he just read the last few pages of the book and got to the end of the book. And then he said, as he put the book away, he was reading on his phone or his tablet, excuse me, his tablet. And, and he reads the last few pages and he leaves the car and he says, I want to have, I want to see an owl. And he looks up in the sky and there's, he describes it as a bright light. He says it was as if someone took a razor blade and was behind the fabric of space, behind the fabric of the oh, sky, wow. and cut a little slit. Okay. In the fabric of the sky and and let light shine through. And I worked with him. I did a little drawing of this and I used computer and did the little whoosh, the little mm -hmm. glowy light. And 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 so he asked, he basically said, I want to see an owl, and he saw a UFO. Which it's like that's really weird. That's unusual. That what is not unusual to me. Did he go like what get back in his car, go back into work? Like, I think I've been need to go back. Because to me, it's like, that's like instant delivery. You ask and here it is. So oh, it, it's very common. It's very common. Has there been any tie-ins between owls and cryptid sightings? And the reason why I ask this is I see a correlation. I've heard a correlation between UFOs and cryptids. So I've, I've asked this of people who do cryptid mm -hmm. work and they say, yes, it, they show up. And mostly what they say is like, there was a Bigfoot sighting. One guy mm -hmm. had told me a story. It was like, there was a big giant pile of what they assumed was Bigfoot poop. And okay. so they found it in the woods. There'd been noises. And so then when they were standing there, like taking pictures and analyzing and putting some poop in a little bag to take it back to analyze it and stuff, right. there was an owl on a branch watching them. That kind of thing is, I'm, that's not my mm -hmm. forte is looking into the right, sightings. right. But, but that kind of story didn't surprise me. So that, yeah. So that shows up. That's interesting. That's, that's like, you know, is that, is that another tie in that we're just kind of recognizing now possibly? you know, where yeah, there's yeah. a significance to it, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah. It's, it's, um, so that's not, so I can't, I've asked around and I've only mm -hmm. gotten a couple little stories like that. And they were mostly just in ghost hunting, you know, people go to ghost mm -hmm. hunting sites and they'll, they'll hear yeah. an owl and, and yes, so that shows up too, but yes, of course. So it's tough to, it's tough to make a, if I only have one story, it's hard to make a big, one or two stories. It's, there's no pattern. I tend not to share those. Right. But when I have no, a story I know that what you like mean, has that a pattern. I'm... As in when you've gotten all these others that they all have that same theme. Yeah, exactly. Like you're talking about. That is incredible. 
God. Mike, it has been absolutely wonderful to talk to you. Yes, this was ton tons of fun. Yeah. Oh, are you pl is are you planning another book or what are you going I'm, to do? I'm very I'm writing a fiction book. Oh, you I'm are very close to the end of it. Oh my gosh, has this been hard? Like when you write a nonfiction <laughs> book, right? You, you, yeah. You just report the report. Yes. And you could you try to be faithful to the person's thing and you have them check, but when it's fiction, right. you can write whatever you want. And that's almost harder. Yeah, people don't know. Wow. Like you're like, so, like you can paint yourself into a corner sometimes with storylines. It's like I did. I painted myself into lots of corners. So this took a lot, of, <laughs> yeah, took a lot longer than I thought would like to. to yeah, finish, exactly, so. exactly. So when are you going to be releasing it this year? Soon, hopefully. Oh, it'll be this year sometime. So okay. Um, I mean, it's only February. But hopefully, I'm not. Hopefully, it will be released in 2023. Yeah. Yes, I know what that's like. Been there, done that. Again, yeah. thank you so much. I hope you're going to come back. I, so anytime. We can have more Owl stories. I think this is so fascinating. I, I, I have, I'm not going to run out of Owl stories. Yeah. So oh, if you take my books. It sounds like that, that people are like, you know, like, you know, you know, that whispered, like, I got to tell you something that happened to me. Well, they tell me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So if, yeah. If you, so if anyone anywhere in the world has an yeah. Owl experience, someone in Finland or someone in By the way, Thailand, yes. What, what is for my podcast listeners? What is your website address? Oh, so you can find me at mikecleland.com. Okay. And then from there, you can find links to my podcast series that I did there. I haven't, I'm not working on it, but they're all archived. I can, you can find okay. my books. I've got three books. You can find my, um, I have kept a blog with all the stories on it and stuff. So, okay. Yeah. So mikecleland.com. And if you can't remember that, just Google UFOs, owls, and I'm the first thing that comes up. That comes up. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mike. I want it's to wish you the honor. best of luck in all your projects. Thank you. It's been tons of fun. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow. You know, when I was reading Mike's bio, you know, about what, you know, what his research and, you know, I was like, man, I've never heard of this before. You know, you always hear, you know, the, like I was saying, you know, owls are spooky, Halloween, you know, they're like one of the, one of the motifs that you see with Halloween, the black cat, the bats, the owl, you know, and then of course you hear it also tie in with Native American beliefs or that, that wildfire, you know, I know some of those people have no idea, but it came out in the 1970s. And I want to say it was, I, I think that was one of those one hit wonder kind of groups, but it's memorable because it, it taught, one of the things was, I've heard the bar, the owl hooting outside the door or every night or something like that, three nights in a row. Like basically it was like, I know that the owl is showing up as a messenger of death. That's why it was so memorable. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice song, but again, and, but outside of that, yeah. And then of course, you know, everybody thinks of like, you know, the wise owl, you know, lays potato chips, you know, all these little things, but you know, the owl is seen as a, um, as being wise, the wise owl, you know, all knowing, things like that, but never uh, that tie in with UFOs and sightings or even orbs, right? Because this is another thing, you know, sometimes, you know, he's describing where people are seeing orbs, but then, you're, you know, in some cases, yeah, it's obviously a UFO what they're, what they're seeing, but this orb thing, we can't jump to the conclusion that it's it's a UFO in origin. How's that? It could be some type of paranormal stuff. Why not? And also um, the thing with the cryptids, and I guess my point is that, you know, obviously most cryptids are seen outdoors, maybe in a rural area or something where seeing an owl is not that weird. You know, but that makes you think, I wonder how many people have thought, you know, have I seen owls at certain moments? where all of a sudden I have a sighting of something and it's like, but I didn't see the significance of it when it happened. I think that is so, because I'm sure like, like he was saying, yeah, okay. What are the odds? Like he was explaining about how he has people with a high incidence that do work with Reiki, which is energy work. And they have these experiences with owls. I mean, come on. I mean, there's a lot of different uh, jobs that you could have or careers. Uh, yeah. And and then you think to yourself, you know, usually, how's this? I'm going to say this for the, 
it's almost like maybe somebody that does Reiki is more open, how's this, to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that people do Reiki are not analytical, but usually there's a part of them that is not that, ana, that purely analytical uh, as far as to do the Reiki work. And maybe it's that ability or that facet of their brain or the way they think or the way they perceive the world that allows them to see or or bring those things to manifest around them so that they understand it. You know, like they say, you see when you have eyes to see. Um, and or, and or, you know, you might have the more skeptical or the more analytical types who just, it happens to them, but they just, they just, they miss the memo. They, they don't see the tie-in. They miss it. And um, what he was describing about that guy that was, uh, you know, that the owl flies by him and then he looks and he sees this UFO hovering over this field. The other day I was reading this story uh, about this guy. He This happened to him, he said, back in the 80s. And he had gone out with his brother-in-law. And I want to say this was in Colorado. No, I'm taking it back. It was in the 90s. He's uh, And uh, he says his brother-in-law got on this UFO kick and had bought a lot of these higher end um, <clears throat> cameras and binoculars and things of this nature. They had gone out someplace to where there was, I want to, you know, I want to say it was close to the sand dunes of, or the Sangre de Cristo mountains in Colorado, an area that had a reputation for UFO sightings. But anyway, to make a long story short, one of the times that they see something and they're following them and then they stop and they think that they've, They've not seeing it. And he says that, um, God, what was it? It was, I can't remember if it was a camera or binoculars or something that it could see in another spectrum. And that he looked through them and all of a sudden he could see that UFO, that craft. In other words, sometimes things are there and you just can't see them. And he says, you know, he took it down and he looked up again and there it was. It was, he said it was like 200 yards away. And they, they couldn't see it with the naked eye before they had been able to see it. And it's, for lack of a better word, it had, um, it had almost done, if you want to look at it, like a cloaking device kind of deal. Uh, or, and, and, you know, and I've heard of this, you know, same, and I'm going to use the, the example of, you know, the Predator movie, the original one where, well, they used it in the following movies, but that was when that thing was introduced where this thing is basically able to bend light and camouflage itself. So, but, you can't really see it unless it moves. And even then, it makes you wonder, you know, sometimes maybe there are UFOs around. And by the way, when I say UFOs, I, I'm not ascertaining where the origin is because nowadays, God, that could be anything. Um, and they're there, but we just don't see it. We don't have the capabilities within the, 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 the spectrum of color that the, our naked eye can capture it. And yeah, every once in a while, we do. And then, but other times doesn't mean just because we don't see it and the, uh, oh, what was it? The other day there was another person. Oh my God. I can't remember who it was that was um, talking about <clears throat> how they had noticed uh, <clears throat> there was some type of experiment where they were uh, with a certain camera, obviously taking or filming like towards the, the sunlight, the sun, you know, the day. And, oh, Marlene, what was it? I can't remember now the, or, uh, I want to say it was, it was some some country like, one of the Slavic countries. I, I'm not sure which one. They have basically, you know, when you set up these things, basically these cameras to like, just monitor, just to see. Basically, they caught what looks like it's some type of craft moving so quickly that the only reason why they're able to realize that it's going by is that basic it blocks the sun. In other words, the shadow of it. But it's moving so rapidly. I mean, the way they describe it, the speed is like, it's like almost like there's no way you could ever see it with the naked eye. And that they basically the only way that they were able to recognize that this was because it would block out like the sunlight bouncing off the camera. And that this happens so many times that 
it wasn't just okay this is an anomaly that they're realizing that these crafts are zipping by at such a high rate of speed that it just couldn't the, the camera in and of itself couldn't just capture what it is and check this out that this thing is about they're guesstimating about 300 feet long we're not talking like little itty bitty flying saucer kind of deal we're talking a big mama ship all right and i was listening to this and i was like you know what for all the sightings that we have of ufos and you know whatever lights whatever you want to call them how much do we have that we just don't see and by the way i'm i'm gonna go into you know i know there's a little bit staggered but we're right in the middle of all these balloon sightings all over the world like well not all over the world but canada and the u.s and then south america and south america and, you know is it a balloon is it a ufo what is it you know i don't know we're how's this we're on the cusp of something and i just i'm not sure what it, it means what it is i would just hate to think though that the of that this phenomena of extraterrestrial life or ufos or whatever would be manipulated for some other purposes okay because us normies have been trying to prove or you know talk about their own personal experiences with either seeing a sighting or what he described as moments of lost time and you know until recently you got that odd look like oh yeah you're one of those god knows people in certain types of jobs if if you ever said i saw or i witnessed this it's like that's a career killer you're not you don't you want to want to be known as the guy that saw the lights or the pilot that saw forget it and all of a sudden all this interest eh, call me a cynic but i just don't want the phenomena of ufos whatever their origin or extraterrestrials or whatever they are okay to be manipulated for something other purpose than what it is as far as understanding you know or what the impact is to us you know as human kinds like i've said this, and this is my i'm going to throw this this theory out there and i've talked about it before maybe these extraterrestrials are stuck here maybe they've been stuck here for a while because you know what you hear about all these ancient aliens and all these um paintings and uh statues and uh all these depictions of what appear to be some type of flying saucer or aircraft or stories that are told and then i'm thinking okay how long do you have to stick around before you either figure us out or and then other people say well you know there's more than one and they're i'm thinking wait a minute what if this is some type of extraterrestrial race or culture civilization i don't know what to call them that are stuck here they got stuck here and they can zip around like they got their craft but where they don't they god knows this is me being sci-fi author Maybe something happened that they can't just, they just can't leave to either go where they were going or go back to where they came from, whatever. And they're kind of stranded on earth. Okay. And they've just been around all this time and nobody's caught on. Can not really, you know, except, you know, all these kind of hidden, you know, sightings that people can interpret different ways. And it's because they, they haven't left because they can't. That's, that's that's my theory for today. So again, guys, I hope you like the show. I love speaking to Mike. Please check out his website. And again, I will have a link to his website on the credits of the show. Or for anybody that didn't hear, it's MikeLeland.com if you want to go to his website. I have a lot of great authors coming up, other experts, a lot of interesting people coming and talking about the unusual. So till then, take care. <laughs>